Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Peace. Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Side flip. The album, the Color Guard Edition, Dad F. <clears throat> Take me down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Oh, won't you please take me down? How are you guys doing? Oh my God. Happy Monday. Um, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Monday. And today we're going to talk about Trisha Paytas and um, her husband Moses. But before I get into this video, I want to say a very special thank you to adamandeve.com for sponsoring yet another video over on this channel. You guys, listen, okay? I love Adam and Eve so much. They have been so fantastic to me. If you have never checked out their website, please go check out their website. Um, with my code, code Peter, you get 50% off your first item plus free shipping and handling in the United States and Canada. They have so many things over there. Um, they have 90-day return policy, hassle-free, just send it back if you don't want it and just say, hey, I don't want it, okay? And they also have 24-hour customer service, so you can call them up and ask for whatever help that you need. If there's something, you know, on the website that you don't understand or you have questions about what you want to order or something that you've ordered, you just call them up and ask them. And 20% of the proceeds go to the uh, fight and prevention of HIV and AIDS around the world, which I love any kind of business that has a cause. AdamandEve.com is one of those businesses, and I love them so much. And I have to tell you, okay, I have to tell you, one of my favorite things that I never imagined in a million years that would happen as a result of me being on YouTube was that I get so many messages from you guys, okay, especially because my husband and I and I'm going to talk about this in this video today. We talk so much about couples counseling and intimacy and the importance of intimacy and the 12 points of intimacy. And I talk a lot about it on my Peterisms channel as well. Um, so many of you couples out there will contact me and be like, we got up on the website tonight and we ordered a few things and we had so much fun and thank you so much. And, you know, there are other people out there, singles too, it's for singles as well, will, uh, you know, DM me or even in the comment sections, people will be like, I used your code. Thank you so much. So you guys, thank you so much for letting me know. Um, it's really fun for me to see that you guys are using mine. It's fun for you too. And it's fun for adamandeve.com. Um, but it really is fun for me to see that you're actually using the code and purchasing things. You don't even have to tell me what you buy, you know, please, please. But, um, anyway, it, it's fun for me to know that people are actually getting use out of the code and having fun with it and that it's, you know, bringing happiness to couples and things like that. So I think, you know, many of us could use a little, you know, spark in the passion of life. So. Thank you, adamandeve.com. All the information is listed below. All right, let's get into today's video. Now, I had a hat on. I've been at the pool for the majority of the day. Now, if you do not know, and I'm not going to talk about this in every video, but I am running for pageant queen of the HOA election, <laughs> okay? HOA is Homeowners Association. The next election, I'm joking about this, but I'm kind of like, the more I talk about it, I'm like, Actually, I think I might run for something, okay? But um, the HOA is the Homeowners Association, and it's kind of like who manages everything in our neighborhood and all this kind of stuff, and there's like six people that are on the board. And so, like, annually, we have, like, a ballot that we have to, you know post and write in who we want and nominate and then they send out the nominations and then you vote on it, right? Actually, it's kind of funny. So there was this guy last year who won. He is now the HOA president. He would walk around the neighborhood because he walks every day anyway and he would have a t-shirt on and it had this thing that he would wear over. It was on the front and the back. I think I talked about this in my vlog actually and it would say vote for so and like his name for HOA president and it worked. So I am like, okay, listen, I have to spend the entire summer at the pool. I have to like schmooze the women at the pool and I have to get their vote and I have to practice up on my talent, which is going to be a fan flipping marching band spectacular. Just don't even worry about it. Okay. We're going to go through the neighborhood. It's going to be so much fun. I'm going to have food trucks following me because who doesn't like good food and I'm going to win the page. I'm going to win the page and I'm going to listen. They're going to put the crown on me and they're going to be like, how did we ever live in this neighborhood and run the HOA without Peter? And I'm going to say, okay, first of all, 
<laughs> Those old hedges are, they're gone. We're getting rid of them. I'm gonna come in with some rules and I'm gonna tidy up this place. Okay, so anyway, um, if you live in an HOA like I do, like in a condo association where they have like very strict rules, it is so funny some of the rules that you have to live by. <laughs> so like, anyway. Um, so I've been at the pool all day. Um, I went up there with my neighbors and just kind of was like talking to people and gossiping. If there was, I should be the drama channel for the HOA. Oh my God, there is so much gossip and drama that goes on in my neighborhood. Oh, it is it's so, they're like, and it's always like this. Like somebody will be at the pool and they'll be like, oh, hi, how are you? It's so good to see you. And then like as soon, I mean, as I can't snap. As soon as they leave, everybody's like, now, did you hear? I, I don't want to, I don't want to speak ill of somebody. And I just sit there in the pool and I just listen. I'm just like, what? What are you? Okay, so anyway, they're like, now, I don't want to be a gossip, but did you hear? And I'm like, oh no, really? Say it's not so. So anyway, it's so fun to sit there and listen. And, um, oh, the other thing about it is that the majority of the people that live in my, not, my neighborhood, they all went to like the same Catholic elementary, junior high, and high school. So they like all know each other and they're constantly talking about the archdiocese and all this kind of stuff. It's a complete world that I have no clue on. Use my Adam and Eve code, code Peter. Anyway, um, let's get into today's video. So I took the weekend off and I was just kind of relaxing and we did an open house to go to for our friend's daughter that graduated from high school. Congratulations to Maddie for graduating from high school. She was actually in some of my booktube videos way back in the day. Um, and we just had all kinds of stuff that we were doing this weekend. So I was like, I'm gonna take the weekend off from filming videos and I'm back. Tomorrow, I may not film videos because tomorrow is my husband's birthday. Happy birthday to um, my husband, Alex. And um, he's got all kinds of stuff planned that he wants to do. So that's real exciting. Um, anyway, so I wanted to talk about this today. And I've been kind of wanting to talk about this for a while because I had seen um, Sebastian Soto do a video about this. Now, if you don't know who Sebastian Soto is, Sebastian Soto, fellow drama commentary channel, is um, a Trisha Paytas channel. <laughs> No, I'm totally joking. I love Saba so much. Actually, my nephew's name is Sebastian, and everybody calls him Saba, so I always call Sebastian Saba because of that. But anyway, um, so I love S Sebastian so much, and he was so kind um, when I was gone. He put together a, a virtual Get Well card with all of these people that sent like video clips into him, and then he put this whole card together and sent it to me, and I literally sat on my front porch just bawling my eyes out, watching this like lengthy virtual card of all of these people that were like, Get Well, Peter. We're wishing you the best. You know, we miss you. It was just so fantastic. And Sebastian, I mean, he didn't get paid for that. He just did it out of the kindness of his heart, and I just, he is one of the most unbelievably kind, compassionate people that I've literally ever met in my entire life. So anyway, I noticed that Sebastian had done this video. Let me see if I have it pulled up. Um, I do have his channel pulled up right here. <clears throat> Please, I'm going to link Sebastian's channel below, probably from this video. Go subscribe to S Sebastian. He would love that. And he's just so fun and ha ha. And if you kind of like if you like the energy and the flipping of the fans and the funny ha ha, and he too wears lip gloss. Where's my lip gloss? Um, on his, on my channel, you'll love his channel. And we cover very similar topics. So, uh, yeah, I would say I'm a Trisha Paytas channel too. Anyway, you know those channels that Trisha's always talking about? There's drama channels and every second that she does something, we catch it, we throw up a video. That's me and Sebastian basically. Oh, Adam McIntyre too. Adam McIntyre, we can lump us all into the same group. We're all Trisha Paytas channels at this point, right? So anyway, um, so Sebastian posted this video, and it was like a week ago, I think, actually. Hold on a second. He posts like 15 videos a day, like I used to back. I don't got the energy for it anymore. Listen, I'm going to be 50 next Wednesday. 50 I want to get! I am so excited to be able to say that in a video because for years I have stolen that. I think it's Molly Shannon on Saturday Night Live. She's like, I'm 50 and I like to kick. I have wanted to say, I mean, I've said it in videos, but now I can actually say it and it will be the truth. So next week I will be 50, which I'm really excited about. Okay, where is this at? Trisha Paytas and Moses caught lying. Trisha Paytas, Moses, breakup three days ago. So I will link it below so you guys can go check it out. It actually has footage from a Trisha Paytas live stream in there that I'm not going to include it in here. Um, Sebastian, he got it himself. You go watch his video, go see the clip, okay? If you wanna go watch the clip and then hear what I have to say about it, do. But he has some very interesting, um, I would say, points talking about, it's not just gossipy, he's talking about relationships and relationship issues. And I think it's an interesting conversation. So I'm gonna just give you the short end of it. 
the clip is not long it's probably like 15 20 seconds but it's this clip where Trisha Paytas was in a live stream and she said um, I'm gonna give you guys some tea. And so Sebastian like immediately started recording it, right? Like you can even see on the clip where he starts recording it, which is so funny. So anyway, um, that's a good drama channel. We're like, oh, 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 I gotta get in here. I remember back in the day, okay? Like I can remember back in the day when it was like, you know, Rich Lux and Dustin Daly. We, like one of them would like text me and be like, girls, you see what happened? Or I would text one of them and be like, Jeffree Star just posted a video. And we would be like in the hour. I mean, in the hour, we would be like posting videos. I ain't got time for all that today, okay? Jeffree Star bore a snake anyway. He does something extravagant. I'll get to it in two or three days. Don't worry about it. You know you're going to hear my opinion over here, okay? It's not going to be in that hour. I think all of us today are just kind of like, do your thing. We'll get to it when we get to it. We're having dinner right now, you know? But anyway, um, so I watch this clip, and Trisha Paytas is in this live stream, and she says, um, I, uh, want, I'm going to give you guys some tea. And then she goes in and starts talking. I'm just giving you guys the the abbreviated version of it. I don't know how specific any of this is. Not at all. <laughs> but she basically says in there that her and Moses almost broke up. This was before they were married because Moses told her that he didn't want to have kids. And she was like, well, you know, I'm getting to an age where I don't know that I'll be able to have kids and I want to be with somebody that's going to want to, I think she says that. I want to have kids and if you don't want to have kids with me, then just pack up your stuff and go. Okay. She says that in there. She's like, I told him just pack up your, you might as well just leave. Right. And so he started packing up his stuff and then Trisha, like she's done and we, and she has shown us in her own storytelling times, basically said, and she told us in this live clip basically said no please don't go please don't go like i won't have kids but i want i want you to be forever in my life now what's interesting to me about this and i will tell you sebastian has his own point of view and i think we kind of share a similar point of view in this but what's interesting to me about this is that trisha paytas at that point all right and this is where okay i have said this in several videos and I think other people have said it, and I think people are concerned about this, is they're tr like translating into a family channel. People are gonna remember that Trisha said this, okay? People are gonna remember the desires or the lack of communication that they had before they got married, and they were together for a very short time, and then they got married. Hey, listen, I know people have been together two weeks and got married, so I'm not passing judgment on that, okay? But I do think that there are important conversations that need to occur before we are rushing into a lifetime commitment of which, you know, being married to my husband, I hope that we're married for the rest of our lives, you know. I hope that we, that he's my forever, I hate the word forever person, but I do. Like, I hope he's my forever person, you know, and all of that. And the thing is, and I don't think we talk enough about this, that's a lot of work, you know? These relationships that are, I don't know, that long lasting or that people stay passionate towards each other, because that's part of it too, right? Not just becoming roommates or friends with that person, but staying passionate towards that person, loving and kind, compassionate towards them, you know, empathetic. I think over a long period of time, 10, 20, 30 years, um, I think there's a lot of work, you know, that goes into that in any kind of relationship. Well, any kind of romantic relationship, any kind of relationship, period. But mostly in romantic relationships, you guys are going to go through seasons of your life, right? You're going to go through really difficult, hard times. I've been through it with my husband. That's why we were in marriage counseling before. That's why we're in marriage counseling again. Now, the reason why is our marriage counselor from before, he closed down his practice and we were supposed to find somebody right away and we didn't, right? So now we're back in marriage counseling, but not for any specific reasons, just because, well, I've talked a lot about this on my vlog, but anyway, but just to like improve communication and whatever. And it was interesting because in our first marriage counseling session, um, our therapist said to us, he goes, you guys are like so much better than most people are at. I'm like, yeah, because we did three years of work already. My husband and I, if you have watched any of my previous videos or even videos with him in it, we are such advocates of couples counseling. And my husband, if you asked him, what's one thing that you should do before you got married? He would say, go to couples counseling because these conversations like having kids, money issues, things like where you're gonna live, all these kinds of things, right? Like not just short-term goals, but long-term goals are things that should be discussed and worked out 
in couples counseling long before you make this very, very serious commitment, you know? And so for me to sit there and hear uh, Trisha say that because he was going to leave, that in that moment she just was like, fine, I'll just let go of this dream of having kids, right? Like, I don't understand that. And it really kind of makes me sad, honestly. And then it's like there was, I saw on Spill Some Tea With Me, um, that there was this whole thing on there about, well, why did, um, it was a clip that Trisha Post said, and somebody asked her on there, when did Moses change his mind about having kids? And she's like, oh, well, um, that's an interesting question. Oh, and you know, and it's like, when did that happen? Like, when did that conversation occur? You know, because Trisha got pregnant very quickly into their marriage, like the month they got married. So you go from Moses not wanting to have kids to you saying, leave, don't leave, to then getting married, to then getting pregnant, right? And, you know, it just, it, I think these, these are conversations that couples should be having. Whether you're on YouTube, whether you're not on YouTube, no matter what. And the thing that's so interesting to me about this, watching this, and you know, I always try to, whenever I'm watching YouTubers, to kind of like just compare them to people that I know in my real life, right? And um, most of my friends, I would say the majority of them, 90% my entire life have always been girls or women. And you know, What's interesting to me about this is friends of mine, even today, that are in their 30s, you know, will be like, well, I'm dating this guy, but like he really doesn't want kids, and I want kids, and that's important to me, so I don't really think that we can go forward in this relationship. Like, this is a serious issue. This is a deal breaker. When we talk about deal breakers with dating, you know, I have so many friends of mine that actively date, and the kid issue, not, not only the kid issue, but whether or not that, like for women, whether or not the man has kids already, those are deal breaker issues. Like seriously, deal breaker issues. Like I've talked to friends of mine that they really like a guy and they're like, no, he doesn't want kids and I'm not going to force him to change that. And that's something that's serious to me. Or they'll say, you know, he's already got kids with somebody else and he's got a three, a six, and a nine-year-old, and that's just not my ideal dream, you know, so no, like we're, you know, before you get to a serious point in a relationship, don't you think those are conversations that should be had? I mean, before you're getting to a point where you're like, okay, we're getting married next week, or before you get to a point where it's like, okay, move your stuff out, you're already living together, don't you think those should be conversations that should be had? I do. I think those are conversations that should be had. I mean, I think those are deal breaker conversations, you know? And there were conversations that my husband and I had. We, I mean, people ask all the time, like, do you guys, did you guys want to have kids? No, we did not. Neither one of us, okay? And I can tell you, I probably, if I got together with somebody that kind of wanted to have kids and whatever, I probably would have at some point. Um, but for me, and I've said this in many, many videos, it would have profoundly changed my life because I would have been the father that wanted to live in the right neighborhood, have my kids actively involved in sports and arts and things like that. I would have been very involved in the school. I would have wanted to be that parent. You know, I would have, would have wanted to live in a neighborhood where my kids had lots of friends to play with and things like that. My life wouldn't be looking like going to the mire with my good Judy at one o'clock in the morning. It wouldn't look like that, right? Because there's a lot you trade off with being a parent because you choose to be a parent, right? And so like, you know, like that for me, is like a huge it was a huge deal breaker thing my husband was like a absolutely not I don't want kids and so it was perfect for both of us because we're like we want to travel you know whatever and we even tell people this and this is such like I think this kind of gets a bad connotation in our society today but like Alex my husband and I will both tell you we're too selfish like we want to travel we want to go do stuff we want to stay up as late as we want to like that was not a dream of ours. That was not on our bucket list of I have to do these things before I live. Do I understand people? Yeah, I have many, many friends of mine that have kids that that was their dream. That's what they wanted, you know? But that was not for me. And so if I had gotten together with somebody at that time that was like, I want to have kids and I want to have kids right away, I'd have been like, mm, maybe down the road we can talk about this. And if they said, well, this is so important to me right now, I would have said that I don't know that I think I'm the right person for you, you know? And you need to go find somebody that's gonna be right on the same page as you, you know? And, and I think that's what we do for people that we care about and we love, um, you know, because I think then what happens is you get yourself in a situation where I just am very confused where, how it goes in a matter of months from I never want kids 
to having a kid. I, I just don't understand that. Um, and, I, and I don't understand how that wouldn't cause problems in a relationship down the road. I hope it's not. I hope it's not for them. And I hope that, you know, like, Moses seems very excited about all this. You know, I continue to stand my ground when I say that they seem very happy to, together to me. You know, people always want to come out and say this relationship is fake and blah, 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 whatever. This relationship doesn't seem fake to me. Does he seem like her assistant? Like, by definition, he does a lot for her. Yes, he does, right? Maybe that's just who Moses is. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I think it'd be kind of hard to say no to Trisha Paytas. I'm just saying, right? But they seem very happy to me. You know, I don't know. Maybe Moses thought... I didn't really want kids, but I love Trisha so much that if this is what she really wants, I guess I'll have a kid for her, you know? And, and yes, I think I would make a good father and whatnot. But I do think that this is going to be something that's going to be highly scrutinized when it comes to them posting a family channel and showing all this. I really don't think they should show any of it at all. I, I really don't. I also think, like, you know... I was thinking about this as I was setting up my ring light and stuff today, that it's interesting to me because Trisha already can't stop being in live streams, talking about this. I mean, she's bringing all this drama and attention to it. What is going to automatically stop the moment that this child is born? I mean, is she still going to get in live streams? I mean, she gets in, I've been in live streams, okay, and said things I wish I hadn't. So, because you're like, I mean, you know, Trisha edits and things like that sometimes. It's like you are in a live stream. People ask you something. If you respond to it, that's going to be forever noted. If you're a family channel that's based on parents and showing their... Which are highly, highly criticized right now, okay? These family vloggers are being so highly criticized right now, you know? I mean, you're talking about a whole different world that I think... They really, it, it, it's, you know, it's one thing to have this dream. It's one thing to get excited and being pregnant and congratulations to them and, I, and I, you know, whatever. But it's another thing to show every bit of it online. I don't know. You know, one of the things, and I want to talk about this as far as like couples counseling and stuff. When I was watching YouTube way back in the day, when my husband and I will have been together this year in August, we'll have been together 14 years if we make it to August, which, <laughs> listen, things are good over here in the romanticals. So anyway, use my Adam and Eve code. But no, like, so 14 years we've been together, right? And I can remember watching YouTube. I don't know when I started watching YouTube, but I watched a lot of gay couples at the time. I still do. And I talked about them on here not too long ago. I watched, you know, at Andrew TMI, who has a boyfriend who's not very often in his videos, but he talks about him in his videos and Matt and Blue and, and there's you know other couples that I watch uh Taylor Phillips and his boyfriend are on YouTube and things like that I watch Chris and Ian until they broke up broke up and um but back in the day you know I would watch uh, these gay YouTubers and they'd always be like hi how are you oh my god we love each other so much and then like a month later they come out with a breakup video and it would just be like oh we're so sad and it would be just one of them and they'd say like we just broke up right um i also watched mark miller and ethan hathcote for a long time because they were from indiana and i had friends that knew them um and they're no longer they've broken up and things like that and i'm not saying anything about the breakup right like i mean people break up let's just be for real so but, you know, I would watch these channels, and I watched at the time, and this was really, they are a huge part of why I am on YouTube today, is um, RJ and Will from Chep 689 And um, they were a couple that started in Florida. They were both in college. They moved to L.A. They really were an honest couple. Like, when they had arguments and stuff that happened, like, they would talk about it. And I really appreciated it. You know, I was like, this is like a real couple. And um, my husband and I even had the opportunity to interview them at one point. And they were just really nice guys and they were really open and all this kind of stuff. They have since broken up and taken, like, their channel is, is I think, non-existent at this point. So anyway, but there was this, like, I felt like this kind of fake, fakety, fakety couple thing on YouTube that was like, um, you know, like, hi, how are you, boo, or whatever, you know. Trisha Paytas was even somebody that told me back in the day, she's like, there's a lot of couples on YouTube that are fake. And the only reason they're together is for the YouTube channel, right? I think it's interesting that she told me that. I don't believe in retrospect, I don't believe like looking back at that, that that's her and Moses. I don't, like, I don't know. He just seems to be like, he, honestly, he's like, people say, why does he co-sign her lies? I said in my last video, why does he co-sign her lies? I don't understand it. I think in looking back at it the last couple days, I just think he's so, like, enamored of her and, and kind of, like, spellbound to some degree. Like, Trisha can do no wrong. 
and you know and if he is as calculating as he as people say he is towards his family and things it's like it's kind of like Trisha and Moses like forever like against everybody kind of thing you know and I think that they kind of have that mentality I don't know it doesn't seem fakety fakety to me but you know, and people always say, like, she's so mean to him and whatever. And there's been moments where I've witnessed that as well. I think, like, if they're going to do this family channel, they're going to have to, in a very limited way, show their life. And they're going to have to start talking about, you know, like, the reality of the relationship. I don't believe that was the one and only time that Trisha Paytas and Moses were going to break up. I just don't, okay? I think we've seen enough of Trisha Paytas and her relationships online that if Trisha's like, I'm not getting what I want, you need to go, right? And then as soon as they start walking out the door, which is interesting to me, okay? Like this is one thing we haven't talked about with the Jason Nash and you know, the Sean and all that kind of stuff that we've seen in the past. Moses, start, Trisha told him to leave and he started packing his stuff. I think that's very telling of Moses. In fact, I'm not really sure that Trisha was telling the T on them breaking up. She was really kind of indirectly saying, this is who Moses is and y'all don't know. Like Trisha said leave and Moses started packing his bags. Ah, that's pretty telling of me to somebody that's pretty independent in a way that I don't think that we see in the videos and the live streams that she posts with Moses or talking about him. So I don't know. I will say this. I don't think they're going anywhere for a long time. I, I do think they'll be together for quite some time. And I think that there will be longevity on YouTube. Do I think we're going to see more fighting and arguing as time goes on? Probably. I mean, any couple has that. How much of it she decides to show and not show? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how they are going to do this family vlogging channel. I really have no clue. Like, I, it, you know, like if Trisha called me up and said, yes or no, what do you think? I would say absolutely not. Do not do a family vlogging channel. You don't need it. You're making enough money otherwise. It's going to bring you more trouble than it's worth. And it might be the end of your career like do not do it and if anybody does that and they are told and, and the comments are saying what I'm saying about this family vlogging channel right and if she's like I'm gonna do it anyway I mean do you do what's gonna make you happy right at the expense of I don't know I don't know you know and if you do it anyway against you know then what you're saying is, I know best. And I think that one of the things that Trisha has proved over time is that she does not know best. So anyway, I don't know. I hope it works out for them. And, and really, I hope the well-being of the child and their family is, you know, what they keep as a priority, you know, above all else. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, but... Let me know what you think about all of that in the comment section below. So thank you, Sebastian, for letting me talk about your video. I actually messaged him. I was like, do you care if I texted him? I was like, do you care if I talk about your video? He's like, no, not at all. And um, don't forget to go use my code, code Peter, for 50% off adamandeve.com. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.